Dear students, I am Rajni. In this session, we will be learning about the topic ray optics. Before we solve few questions regarding this chapter, I would like to give you a brief introduction about the topic in the form of synopsis. Students, we all know about ray optics which is mainly consisting of two concepts, reflection and refraction of light. To begin with, let us take up the concept of reflection where we have the laws of reflection given by angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. The normal, the reflected ray and the incident ray all lie on the same plane at the point of incidence. Another topic which I would like to teach you is regarding mirrors where I would like to take up the concept of plane mirrors. In a plane mirror, when light is incident, the amount of light reflected back is maximum. In such a case, the angle of deviation is given by d is equal to 180 minus 2i, where i is the angle of incidence. In another case, when two plane mirrors are inclined by an angle theta, the deviation is given by d is equal to 360 minus 2 theta, where theta is the angle between the two plane mirrors. Students, please make a note of what I am going to tell you now. In this case, the angle of deviation is independent of the angle of incidence. That is, irrespective of any angle of incidence, the deviation will remain the same. Moving on, we can also find out the number of images formed by a plane mirror which is inclined at an angle theta using the formula n is equal to 360 by theta minus 1 and n is equal to 360 by theta. Now, I have an interesting concept to tell you where I have placed a plane mirror at rest. An object is moving towards the plane mirror with a speed u and the image is formed behind the mirror, it is observed that the image will also move towards the plane mirror with a velocity u. In another case where we have the object which is at stationary and the plane mirror is made to move towards the object with a velocity u, the image will move with a velocity two times the velocity of which the plane mirror is moving that is 2 times of u. Students, now let's move on to the concept of curved mirrors. In your second year class, you would have all learnt about a relation between focal length and radius of curvature which is given by f is equal to r by 2. We also have another very important relation connecting the focal length, the object distance and the image distance which is given by the mirror formula that is 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v. Another very important definition which we have to learn here is regarding magnification. Magnification is defined as the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object. Magnification can also be expressed as m is equal to hi by ho which is also equal to minus v by u which is equal to f divided by f minus u which is also written as f minus v divided by f. Students please make a note here the sign convention should be applied while solving the problems. Another very important thing which I would like to tell you here is regarding concave mirror and convex mirror where in your classes you would have drawn the ray diagrams for image formation of object at different positions. In a concave mirror, please see to it that the magnification can be both positive as well as negative. Magnification is negative when the image formed is real and the magnification is positive when the image formed is virtual. But students, please be aware of this point now. In a convex mirror, magnification will always be positive since the image formed by a convex mirror is always virtual in nature.
students now let's move on to a very important topic that is refraction of light in this particular concept we have three different topics to be learned that is refraction through a plane surface refraction at a prism and refraction through a spherical surface Snell's law is given by sin i by sin r is equal to a constant which is written as the refractive index moving on let us go into the concept of refraction through a plane surface where we explain the refraction through a glass slab in this concept i would like to introduce the term lateral shift where all of you would have drawn the ray diagram and understood the concept in your theory classes lateral shift is defined as the perpendicular distance between the emergent ray and the incident ray in another case we have the definition of normal shift where it is defined as the apparent shift in the position of the object when viewed normally from another medium students here there is an important case to be noted we have two important cases to be discussed also in one of the cases if the object is placed in the denser medium and the observer is in the rarer medium it appears to the observer that the image is formed more closer to him in such a case students note this the apparent I mean the refractive index is given as the ratio of real depth by apparent depth in the second case when an object is placed in the rarer medium and the observer is viewing from the denser medium the image is formed very far away from him and in this case the refractive index is written as mu is equal to apparent depth by real depth another very interesting concept which we have in refraction of light is regarding total internal reflection the two main conditions for total internal reflection to take place is very first all of you know that the ray of light should travel from a denser medium to a rarer medium the second condition being the angle of incidence should always be greater than the critical angle now let us look into one of the applications regarding tir where we can analyze the field of vision of a fish imagine this picture in your mind students let a fish be placed at the bottom of a water surface at a depth of height h here the fish looks into the outer world in the form of a circular frame due to the consequence of total internal reflection the radius of the circular frame can be found out using a direct formula which is nothing but r is equal to h divided by root of n square minus 1 where h is the depth and n is the refractive index which can be calculated using the formula n is equal to 1 by sin c where c is the critical angle now moving on let us move on to the refraction through a prism in the prism we would like to discuss about the angle of the prism which is given by the formula a is equal to r1 plus r2 and the angle of deviation is given by i1 plus i2 minus a students as you can see the next formula which you people have derived in your theory classes that is refractive index at minimum deviation which is given by n is equal to sin of a plus d by 2 divided by sin of a by 2 now there's one important concept i would like to tell you regarding the refractive index and the angle of prism in a prism what we have to note down is if the angle of prism is equal to the critical angle then the ray will be grazing the surface if the angle of the prism is greater than twice the critical angle you would observe that the tir will take place so what are you supposed to note down here students is that the angle of prism should lie in between critical angle that is c and 2c now the next concept which i would like to tell you is regarding refraction through a surface might be all of you would remember that lengthy derivation which you have done which is given by the formula minus n1 by u plus n2 by v which is equal to n2 minus n1 by r
students now let us do a very important topic that is related to refraction through a lens in your classes you would have learnt about the different definitions regarding the lens one important concept where we have to learn here is regarding the lens makers formula this is a very important formula which is used for solving problems where 1 by f is equal to n2 by n1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 where r1 and r2 are the radii of curvatures of the two surfaces of the lens. Students here I would like to tell you one more point that is regarding power of a lens. Power of a lens is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length and its SI unit is given by diopter. Now let's move on to another very important concept that is the focal length for a biconvex lens which is given by f is equal to r divided by 2 into mu minus 1. In case of a plano convex lens the focal length is given by f is equal to r divided by mu minus 1. Students, in a plano convex lens, one of the surfaces is chosen as the plane surface where the radius of curvature is equal to infinity. In your classes, you would have also learnt about the image formation at different position of the objects using ray diagrams. Now, let's come to another concept where we take a lens of focal length such that it is immersed in water of refractive index 4 by 3. In this case, the focal length is given by Fw is equal to 4 times of Fa. That is, focal length when it is immersed in water is equal to 4 times that of the focal length in the air medium. Another topic which I would like to tell you is regarding two thin lenses in contact. The effective length of the two thin lenses in contact is given by 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. Students, you would have not learnt about the next concept in the theory class where we have the silvering of lens. When a lens is silvered, it behaves like a mirror. The focal length of such a lens is given by 1 by f is equal to 2 divided by f1 plus 1 by f subscript m. Students, make a note here, f1 will be the focal length of the lens where refraction takes place and fm is the focal length of the mirror where reflection takes place. 